Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Aquaman, issue number 37. Uh, I actually thought this was going to end this issue, and that seems to be a lot of what's going on. I don't know if uh, Dan Abnett is trying to just keep this storyline continuing, but it's it's like you think it's going to end, and then all of a sudden, nope, 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 we're good. You know, and no, 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 okay, we're going to wrap it up now. No, no, no we're going to keep going. And like, dude, what is this accordion effect that I'm, I'm actually starting to get vertigo? Maybe it's actually seasickness. Anyway... So, uh, uh, Corn Wrath, he is unbelievable, like almost full Cthulhu mode at this point. I say almost because he's going to get a lot more in this issue, uh, when he finally accepts his role that he's got to, he can't just rule over Atlantis. He's got to destroy it. Just like his father had the idea of always building Atlantis. The problem is he was building it on a weak foundation. So he was always doomed to continue toppling. But the idea is to completely destroy Atlantis down to his foundation and then build it again. But Dark Chaos Gods, they don't usually build. They just destroy. And they find more reasons to destroy. It's like, oh, you'll rule the entire Earth, but it'll be a desolate wasteland. So who needs that, right? Um, he's, Kornrath is weak. He's always been weak. And I'm talking about weak-minded. And that's the, like, you could be the physically strongest guy in the world, but if you're weak-minded, you're a tool. And that's exactly what Cormrath is at this point. And I am enjoying that. Um, I'm picking that up. I don't know if everybody else is picking that up. But um, I don't know. I, I'm hoping that's at least where this goes, that, that that's the explanation for this. I don't know if Cormrath has to necessarily die at the end of this, because he could potentially make a really awesome villain afterward. If they're like, you know, let's, you know, it's it, it's not completely his fault. He had this and this and this happen to him in his life, you know. But um, uh, regardless, yeah, Aquaman is like, you know, okay, I'm I'm coming after you. Yeah, I've got you, you know, right in the heart, man. And and then he, he has to run away, and then uh, because he's got to save his buddy Merc, who. <laughs> Uh, it looks like blood magic is used. Um, uh, Merc is able to stab him through the heart from behind. And he's like, and he's getting ready to, it looks like he's going to decapitate Cormrath. But, um, uh, I guess the blood that, that would, you know, the tainted blood in, inside of Cormrath got onto Merc's arm and it just caused it to, you know, pop under the, under the sea. And it's really disgusting. So... Yeah, man, like, he, he already had the, the, the little scythe-looking thing down there, that, that Kopesh-looking sword. So now, wow. <laughs> oh, he's, what's he going to get next? Uh, it's going to, like, like one of those little grabby claws that you, <laughs> you go to the arcade and you see, you know. Eh. <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, Aquaman leaves, and there's a, there's a couple back-and-forths with Volko and the, the, the sisterhood. And finally, it's just like, oh, he's much more powerful than we thought. And it's like, you know, no apologies to Aquaman. They're like calling him a punk and all this stuff. And and the fact of the matter is he kind of was. He kind of was. But regardless, when um, when the ghosts come around, the spirits of Atlantis, and they decide to boost up his trident, it's like, okay, we're going to give your, you know, your your trident's going to be the foe. It's like, you know, King Shark is like, dude, these things just, just whoop cadaver's butt. They just eviscerated him. Oh my God, I've never seen anything like it. You're thinking these ghosts, they're the answer. They're going to be able to take down Corm Wrath. So they turn around like, oh, we ghosts, we're going to empower your trident to be even more powerful than before. It's going to be our focus, the, the sublime focus of our power. So he's like, yeah, I got my super trident. It's like a super trident. This was literally like when you're playing a video game. I remember this stuff from back in the day when I used to play video games. You're playing a video game and you, 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 you get like the first boss battle. But it wasn't the, the, the end. So you go back and you, you go to the, 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 the save spot, the rest spot. And they give you more advice for how to beat the boss this time. Because he's just powered up and become more powerful than before. But now you get a, you know, your, your weapon gets supercharged also. And your game just got saved. So you go back and fight. And all of a sudden, Corrin Wrath is just like, what? Give me this weak crap. And he breaks the trident in half. You see what I mean by an accordion effect? It's like, that should have been it for the most part. But now it's like, oh, so the supreme power of these awesome ghosts really ain't nothing compared to Wrath. What's going on, dude? I, I think we're going to need to go to, to Mira <laughs> for a play-by-play -play over in her series, Queen of Atlantis. Anyway, this is a little freaky, <laughs> but whatever, whatever. Um, 
the story was enjoyable enough up to now. It's still it's still enjoyable. Enjoyable was the wrong word before. It was a great story up until now. Now it's just enjoyable. Uh, it comes to a point where it's like you don't want this to become a Clone Wars. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like this is the Corm Wrath thing has to end. That that's that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna suddenly turn us around and now it's gonna be some great tireless war, you know, against you know what's going on over in Mira's world, like with Zebel. Hey man. Let's do it, all right? But you you can only do this accordion effect for so long. Nobody likes being in the accordion traffic, right? Where it's like, you know, we're going and we're going to stop. We're going and we're going to stop. Nobody likes that. And that's what this comic book is becoming. So please liven it up. Thank you. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.